Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy and in today's tutorial video I'm going to run through the steps and everything that I have taken to create this horse eye study drawing. So let's get straight into today's tutorial. And one of the first things which I start with is going around the outside of the eye with a dark sepia polychromous pencil and really mapping in the shape and everything. So I make sure that I have a really sharp pencil for this and I use an incredibly light hand just to get that initial shape down. So you can see I just go around the tear duct, add in any water lines, all of that kind of stuff. And then I go through and just shade up some of the shapes. So I shade in that tear duct. I then go through and use a harder pressure around the very outer edges of the eye. So against that water line, you can see me adding in now. And I just make sure that I get the shape of the eye correct. I go in with a little bit of a harder pressure shade here and there just to get all of those dark tones down within the eye. I then turn my attention and start to map in the pupil. Now when you are drawing horses eyes, it's really important to remember that they don't have round pupils like most other animals. They are more like a cat where they have that sort of oval shape, but theirs is actually laying horizontal. And it's really important that you keep that in mind when you do this, that you don't create a round pupil, otherwise it's not going to represent a horse's eye accurately. So with all of those darker areas in, I then go through and start to add my very first base layer. And for that, I use a polychromos warm gray one. And again, here I use a sharp pencil and a really light hand and just really gently shade back and forth. Use a combination of that and circular motions to really fill the tooth of the paper in there. When I'm doing this, I make sure that I leave the areas of the highlight free so I keep the paper white in those little highlight areas because I'm going to add some warm grey one on top of those a little bit later on. With that initial base down, I then go through with some raw umber using it in exactly the same way as that base layer. So I'm shading back and forth, using those circular motions, really smoothing everything out. And then I go through and burnish a little bit with the white pencil. Now when I do this, I use it in exactly the same way as any of the other colored pencils. I just use a light hand, to make sure it's got a really nice sharp point. And I just use a light layer of this white down on top of these colors and it really smudges them together really nicely. So it's important not to go through with too much of a heavier hand at this point so just making sure that you guys understand that I'm using a light pressure on my white pencil to burnish or blend at this stage. Once I've done that then I go through and build a few more of those colours. So some of the colours that I used within this horse eye study were some raw umber as I mentioned just now. I also used some burnt sienna, some Beaster. all of these were from the polychromos range of pencils. And all I do is just look at my reference photo and I start to build up those darker colours where I can see the darker values within the eye. And this is mainly around the very outer edge of the eye. So I build up those darker colours working from the raw umber through to the beast of the burnt sienna. And then I finally go through with some of the walnut brown and just really add in all of those darkest areas. And as I'm building these layers up, I'm continuing to use that really light pressure on the pencil, making sure that I try and keep them as sharp as possible so that I get a really nice, smooth, even colour lay down. In a few areas on this eye, I also go through and add a little bit of manganese violet because they that adding that colour really hypes up the sort of orange tones within those colours that I've previously added. And I find that adding a little bit of violet to orange, they just play really nicely together. So I like to add a little bit of manganese violet here and there just to really accent some of those more orange tones. I also go through and start to add in some of the highlight areas within the eye here. So for the highlight, I put down a base layer of some warm grey one, and then I immediately went over with some sky blue. And again, I used exactly the same technique with my pencils for this. I just used a sharp pencil, really light hand, and just used those circular motions, shading back and forth to just cover as much of the tooth of the paper as possible. On top of that sky blue, I also added a little bit of Delft blue and I also went through with some dark indigo as well. And when I'm using those darker colours, I'm still using that really light hand and I'm really slowly building to a darker tone. So I'm not going straight in with a hard pressure on the pencil, I'm just slowly layering, building the layers one by one until I get to the kind of tone that I'm after, so that darker kind of tone with those blues. 
through the highlights in the middle of the eye where you've got that sort of purpley tone I went through again with some warm grey one and then I just layered a little bit of manganese violet and also mixed that with some Delft blue for that left hand sort of purpley tone highlight and for the lighter highlight I literally just went through with some warm grey one, added a little bit of warm grey four and just a really light layer of sky blue just to give that slight hint of blue tone so that sky reflected in the highlight there. And it's really important when you are adding your highlights to pay attention to any of the details which are shown within the highlight. So in this particular one, I had some eyelashes which were reflected. So to add those in, I made sure that I really looked at the reference photo and then added those details in as precisely as I possibly could. So I looked at the direction and the how many hairs and everything were going on in that reflection and I made sure that I replicated that with my pencils. And to add in those hairs, I went through with a dark sepia pencil and a black pencil and just really really lightly added in some really fine hairs with a super sharp point of my pencil. With all of that together I then went through and refined a few of the darker areas within the eye so I made sure that some of the areas around the outside were as dark as possible and to do that I actually went through and mixed a little bit of walnut brown and the dark indigo together to form a really really unique dark colour. I really like to add those two colours together because it gives a real sense of depth and that's what really helped this eye just layering those two colours on top of one another it gave this really nice dark tone and I think it really helped to bring out the colours and the sort of three-dimensional effect of the eye there as well for the waterline and everything on this eye I just basically went through and layered up some warm grey four I went through and layered some dark indigo and I made sure whilst doing this to keep my layers extremely light and when it comes to the waterline I made sure that I used more of a circular motion to try and get that really smooth look I didn't want a kind of back and forth motion shading motion grainy look so I made sure that I went through and used a, a little bit more of that circular motion I blended out with the white a little bit more to get that smoother look as well on top of those warm grey colours I also went through and added some Delft blue, I hyped it up a little bit with some sky blue as well and even threw in a little bit of manganese violet in there. So you had that sort of continuity of that violet tone through the highlight and through the waterline as well and it just helps to tie those two areas together. For some of the really light areas which you can see within the eye, I actually went through and used a white gel pen and I did this because those areas were really tiny and they were going to be really difficult to preserve when I was adding those layers of colour. So I used a white gel pen to add in those super duper sparkly areas just around the very edges of the eye and through the sort of tear duct area as well. Then it was time to turn my attention to the skin and this is where it got a little bit interesting because on one side, on the left hand side of this horse's eye you had this really sort of bluey grey tone, you had a lot of light reflecting there and then the fur kind of went into this really nice rich chestnutty colour off to the right hand side. So I started off by adding all of those grey tones around the outside of the eye. And to do that I went through and added a base of the warm grey one and as I was adding this base down I made sure that I looked at the reference photo and I noted the direction that any of the fur was going in. So if you look at any kind of eye you'll notice that the fur or hair kind of spirals around it so as you come up over the top lid the fur often comes off towards the right and as you come from the bottom lid it comes from the left and curves down towards the right. So I made sure that I replicated that when I was adding down my base layer and then once that base layer was down I then went through with some of the warm grey fall and I really lightly and really slowly layered that up until I got to this darker grey tone which I was after. To get that sort of blue tone going through there I went through with the dark indigo and again really lightly layered that in the darkest areas of this skin fur patch. I also went through and added some light layers of dark sepia on top of that and I blended this out with some warm grey one and some more of that Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil until I was happy with the kind of tone of that grey of that skin and then I started to add all of the fur. 
So for the chestnutty fur and all of the fur around the outside of the eye, I did exactly the same thing. I went through with a base layer of the warm grey one, again, making sure that I noted any direction of the fur, any direction changes, making sure that I replicated that with that initial base layer. It's really essential that you do that because then it's so much easier to follow that with your next layers. With that layer of the warm grey one down, I then started to fill in those chestnut tones. And for that, I first of all went through with an extremely light layer of the raw umber, just to get that sort of yellowy orange tone going. And then I layered with some Beaster. I also went through with some Burnt Sienna as well. All the while I'm layering these, I'm keeping the layers extremely light, so barely putting any pressure through my pencil at all. And as I'm building up to those darker colours, I'm concentrating those darker colours more in the areas where I have those shadows. So I'm looking at the creases, where the light's hitting the horse, and I'm just adding those darker colours where I can see those more prominent shadows and that darker patch of fur. Through this horse eye study, you've got a lot of the grey toned skin showing through this. So once I'd added a few layers of the Beaster and the Burnt Sienna and the Raw Umber, I went through and I actually added a really light layer of some warm grey four, just so you could get that hint of the skin showing underneath some of that fur. And again, I made sure that I layered extremely lightly when I added this down. I didn't want it to become too grey or like um, really muddy in colour, so I just went through with an extremely light layer just to give that hint that the, you could still see the skin underneath underneath some of that fur. As I built up to some of the darker colours within the fur, I then started to go through and use a fur mark, so I was making really small lines with my pencil rather than shading back and forth. So for the first initial layers I was just shading back and forth, I wasn't using any circular motions because the fur is going in a certain direction and it's quite coarse looking so I made sure that I just used a shading motion with my pencil when I was doing that. As I built up to those darker colours I then started to make really really tiny lines all over the area to give that illusion of fur. So that's how I build up my fur, I add the base layers using some shading, just building up the initial tones, getting the direction in and all that kind of thing and then with the darker colours I then start to add the detail and start to add the texture. So I made sure when I was using those darker colours to work in the direction of the fur as always because if I was to work in a completely different direction then it wouldn't give that realistic illusion that I'm after. So I make sure that I do this across the entire eye and as I'm working towards the right hand side of this study the colours start to get a lot more rich and a lot more saturated. So I apply the layers in exactly the same way on this side except I start to add a few more richer tones. So I actually went through and added a light glaze of some cadmium orange, some middle cadmium red and I also went through and added a few shadow areas with some caput mortem violet. Again those pencils are all from the polychrome most range as well and every now and then I would go through and burnish or blend a little bit with that white pencil and then add a few more of those richer tones back over just to really hype up the contrast between that really rich right hand side and that sort of more grey sort of where the light is catching the eye on the left hand side. To give the illusion that that grey area was catching the light. I also went through there with some sky blue. I just kept the layers really light. Adding a little bit of a blue tone to a grey area makes it look um, as if the light is catching it. So that's what I really wanted to try and convey. So I added some sky blue, a little bit of delf blue through there as well. For the eyelashes of this horse eye study, I actually went through with a black pencil and added these down. So I made sure that the black pencil was really, really sharp so I could get those really precise thin lines. And before I actually committed myself to adding anything to the paper, I studied the reference photo, I looked at the direction that my initial eyelashes were going in and then I added that to the paper. So on the left hand side the eyelashes are sort of coming up towards the top left so I added a long sweeping motion with the pencil going in that direction and as I worked my way across to the right hand side the eyelashes sort of come more horizontal from left to right so I made sure that my pencil strokes were going in that direction and I made sure that I followed the curvature of the eye as I was going around and adding the eyelashes as well that's really important that really gives that sort of spherical feeling to the study. 
To complete the eye study, I added a few whiskers or little eyelashes to the bottom half of the eye. I just used exactly the same technique as the eyelashes here, just using a really sharp black pencil, just looking at each individual hair and then adding it in a really long sweeping motion so that you get that nice line continuity. So that's pretty much it for the process of this study. It's a really, really simple one. You just have to remember that when you're working on an eye or something that is really shiny and smooth, that you need to fill as much of the tooth of the paper as possible. And that's why I like to use a mixture of shading and circular motions because then you get maximum coverage. And I also go through and add a lot of layers of the white pencil. Again, that helps to create a really smooth effect, which is what you want to achieve when you are drawing something glassy or wet looking like an eyeball. And when it comes to the fur, you want to stick more to that shading motion and following the direction of the fur. So you don't really want to use any circular motions unless you have like a really smooth patch of skin or something like that. If you've got fur like the one on this horse, you just want to keep in the direction that the fur is going, keep those shading motions. And you want to work from light to dark and then as you get to your darker colours, that's when you want to start adding the texture and some of those fur lines in. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I really love creating these small eye studies and I plan to do some more unusual ones like a macaw eye, a crocodile eye, some more sort of reptilian unusual eye studies that you wouldn't usually see. If you have any suggestions on eye studies that you would like me to create a tutorial on then make sure that you pop them in the comments below. I love to read your comments and I love to know what you guys would like to see. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and if you like this one, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new around here, why not hit that subscribe button and tick that bell icon so you can be notified of all of my future videos. I post new videos every single Friday and I live stream on Sundays as well. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!